Can you please call the hearing number for the record? This is Commission Hearing Number 245 of 18 January 2022 in Case uh, 247, Raymond Despeville. Thank you. Can you please call the witness? Raymond Despeville. The witnesses here, they are coming on the way. This is our only public session today. Yeah. Swear that the evidence that I shall give, Swear that the evidence that I shall give shall, be the truth, shall be the truth, the whole truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth and nothing but the truth, so help me God. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Despeville, for coming back to the Commission today Thank to complete the presentation of your complaint. We're grateful yeah. to you for coming back today. Thank you very much for, so for having me back. We understand the second part of your complaint really concerns um, your activities with the then opposition and the victimization that followed from, from that. Exactly. But I'll hand the yeah. floor to you as yeah. a complainant. Uh, so uh, Madam you. Chair, if you'll allow me, um, um, following my first uh, testimony, uh, Mr. Basil Soundy subsequently came back, and there's certain things that he said there which are not true. Um, or, or when I, first of all, I'll deal with it when he mentioned uh, that some of my testimony was defamatory. I stand by everything that I said um, in the first testimony. And if Mr. Soundy wishes to take me to court for anything defamatory, I'll willingly rescind whatever immunity I have from this commission for him to take me to court. Um, all the existing divisional managers who are still around from the Bodco years could be called up and will testify exactly what, to what I said was correct. So oh, that's at one point. The second point as well, and Mr. Deputy Chair picked this up during his testimony, Mr. Soundy talking about uh, a property in Bovalo and the North Home. First and foremost, these were never owned by him. When he, the way he was speaking, he, 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 was, he was saying as though this, these, these assets were part of his wealth. It was never his wealth. It belonged exclusively to Mr. Atkinson. Um, I know in some ways they were sorted out for the North Home. Uh, we ourselves in Bodco had devised a tax system to take advantage of certain mistakes that the government had made in the acquisition. And we were able to capitalize on that tax loss. And, and so, well, it does, doesn't excuse the fact the government took the hotel, okay? But, but in part they were, and I'm very sure when, when, when multi-party democracy was reintroduced that they got something for the North Home. But specifically about the Bovalo property, um, this, this property was never purchased for... for, for for, for construction. It was purchased for speculation. And already there, there's a moral issue of foreigners holding land for speculative purposes in this country. And when, when they were returned the plot, which they got back, they were able to sell it at the then market value. And I can, I can promise you there were a lot of people lining up to buy that property from them. 
They made a handsome profit at the full market value. And I can remember Basil Soundy boasting to me how much commissions he had earned on, 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 on the sale. Uh, it was a, a Sichuan woman, but I can assure you, a prime piece of property in Bovalo, there are many, many buyers for. And if anything, they came out of that whole deal extremely well. And so for, and I think um, uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. Deputy Chair, point, started pointing this out, didn't, wasn't it Harry owned this? And then he, when he saw it, he was caught. But as I said again, he was lying. He did not suffer at all from, from the acquisition. If anything, they did very, very well out of it. Okay, so those are those two points um, that, that I just want to um, clarify. Now, on to specifically um, my reason for, it, for being here today, and it, it, um, it's, it's the, uh, the when, when um, on the 30th, I think it was, I've forgotten the exact date, I should have, I should have looked, but 1991 October, when uh, three persons came to my house in Belom. Um, events leading up to that, I remember that day, um, it, was, it would have been over the weekend because um, in those days, before party went, party Sichuan was still underground. Our modus operandi was to, to wear T-shirts, um, walk in groups, obviously, for protection, and, and go to different functions that were being held around the country, fancy fairs, for example. And so to be, the, the object was to manifest in public not obviously not not with signs or anything but just the t-shirt and and talking to people um activating them uh, getting them to to understand the the problems in the country and um that day there was a fancy fair at belazar um and i remember with me jean francois ferrari was with me frank Kilando. we'd we'll drive around in groups um you know three or four cars and would arrive with a couple of supporters and then, you know, get out and mingle with the crowd in our T-shirts, talking, trying to be friendly. Um, and that day, uh, okay, the Frank Kilander was there, uh, Jean Francois was there, myself. Um, there was a, a couple of others. I mean, I don't know who are. I mean, they, anyway, Alexi. I mean, there could have been a couple. And um, when we arrived there, uh, we noticed there was a couple of security guys around, um, guys who were associated with James Michelle. Uh, Jimmy Marengo, I think, was one of them, but I'm not sure. The faces I don't really remember, but we were given a, a fairly, when I say hostile reception, I mean, they didn't, we weren't manhandled or anything, but, but we could see that we were not welcome in this area. And we didn't stay too long. And we moved on. And, and what we did for the rest of the day, I don't even know, don't remember. That evening, um, but, or maybe a, I should just say a little bit before that, um, whilst we were underground, we used to um, <coughs> take confidence from the different embassies who'd offered us help, the Americans, the English, in particular the French. And we would go there quite often, obviously brief them on what we were doing, and um, discuss other things with them. And uh, the French had told me, I don't know, it was a week or two before, um, they said, watch out, you know, we're hearing that they're going to try and do something to you. As such, I didn't, I mean, we, we expected this anyway. Um, but... I, I, I thought about it and I said, you know, nothing, no harm in, in, in preparing myself. And so exactly in my garden, what I had done, my, my garden in Belom was, it was fairly broken. At night time, you could hide in the garden very easily. And I had positioned a couple of gokutos in different areas in the garden. And, you know, it's... Um, okay, and that's What's a little that? Bit... Positioned a couple of what? Sorry? Sorry? Machetes. Yeah, machete, yeah, gokut, yeah, sorry, machetes. And so I'd hidden three or four in different places in my garden. Logically, if, if one has to run, you run towards something that you can use to protect yourself. And thank God I did that. Anyway, and so I had done that. Um, 
that night when, when they, uh, I had been out to dinner, I'd been out to a friend's place and um, left my house the normal way, out through the garage, locked the door. Uh, the, the, it, was, it was, well, it wasn't really secured. There was a, um, was it the galvanized iron fence, sort of like garden fence. Some of the area was blocked, some of it was this um, wire, the, the, the chain link fencing. Anyway, I came back, and I noticed the garage light was off. Okay, I, again, didn't think too much. I said, ah, oh, a, a bulb is blown. And uh, again, I didn't notice that there'd been a hole cut in the chain link fencing to the side. Because it was a little bit dull, obscurity, and so you, you, it wasn't very, I mean, it wasn't, well, it wasn't well lit. The garage light was already switched off a bit, and there was an inside light once you, you went through the door and into the, the start of the, of the premises. And so there was some light, but it was bad light. Anyway, I went through, the door was, okay, it was locked, and unlocked it and closed the door. And there is a, a way to walk uh, 50 meters before you get to my house. And about 10 meters, 15 meters past the door, I hear someone calling my name. Um, initially, I wasn't too shocked. When I turned around, I, there was, I, mean, uh, I wasn't uh, worried about anything because in those days as well, a lot of activists would, would visit me at different times of the day and night. Um, either to complain about something or to, I don't know, just we, we would discuss politics, no? I mean, whatever um, uh, movements like I do at that time. And so um, initially I turned around and I started walking towards the people. And, my God, there I see three guys in masks carrying steel bars. Now... You know, if you want to break someone's legs and arms and do them a little bit of damage, and good old sticks, and especially with three of you, can do the job. You can break enough bones with sticks. But in my mind, when you come with steel bars, I mean, you know, one hit to the head, and you're gone. You know, you don't. And three men with steel bars, wow. These guys meant serious business. So, anyway, thank God I... Uh, I realized that <laughs> trying to stand and fight against three men with, with nothing in my arms, I mean, despite my military training, I mean, I'm not Superman or anything. And so I ran, but I ran into my garden, specifically because there I said, okay, let me get out of the light, into the darkness when I will have the advantage. And that's what I did. I ran into the garden, and the way the garden is, there was a swimming pool, and then it, the swimming pool was sort of built up a bit in the rocks, and then you went down into a sort of flat place. And so I was hidden down, and but from where I, I could, from where I was, I could see the house. And okay, you you could go into my house and then out onto the swimming pool and and the the other side of the garden. And from where I was, I could I had a commanding view of the house, and they came through and. In the darkness, I started shouting to them and saying, come and get me, I'm ready for you. And yes, and, and maybe lucky that they were cowards. And they didn't do it because I can assure you by that stage, I was so, as you can imagine, when you are potentially thinking you're gonna be fighting for your life and your survival, your, um, I mean, the adrenaline and everything else is at its peak, and thank God they were cowards and they didn't come down, because I can assure you, I mean, they were just common thugs. Hand-to-hand um, -hand combat with machetes, I mean, as I said, I was a soldier, a good soldier. I don't think either of them would have, none of them would have. I know, I know what I can do when I am, and, it, and I was young as well, I was very strong at that age still. And so fortunately, they, they didn't take up my offer to come and get me. And they ran away. And 
as they went through the house and out through the garage, they smashed all the windows in my car. Every single window in my car was smashed with their steel bars. And, and then they got into the car and drove off. And uh, obviously I was, you can imagine I was, or even with them going, I was still very nervous and uh, picked up the phone. And the first people I phoned were my neighbors and, and people who worked for me, the, the Gabrielle family. Flora, Alcine, Flora had been my gardener. Alcine used to do housework and cook for me. And their sons were all activists with me in Paris Seshawa. And I phoned them and they came over and obviously they spent the night with me. Um, not, that, not that these guys would have come back to anyway. And, uh, and then thereafter, um, the young party central militants of Belom took it in turns to stay with me at night time and even walk with me around during the day just to make sure that, well, I suppose logically it's, it's more difficult to kill two people than it is to kill one person. And, and so it was the, the reason for having these guys with me was just to have a witness in the event anything should happen again. The next morning I... I phoned up State House uh, Dobin Samso, to be exact. Dobin will remember the conversation. I asked him to switch on. I said, if there's a recording device, uh, I'd like you to switch it on because I'd like Albert René to hear everything I have to say. Well, I'm not going to repeat what I said because, as you can imagine, I was so angry and fired up. The words and the insulting words weren't in short supply. Um, I told him to send anyone and the next time I'd kill them. And obviously yeah, all sorts of all sorts of things. And yeah, and that's about it. And I what, what did Mr. Sampson say? Oh, well, did well he... he didn't he did, to be I you know uh, Mrs. Chair, I don't really remember. I mean, it's a long, I mean, and again, you know, can imagine, I'm a pretty passionate person and I've got quite a sharp tongue and, and, and when, once it gets going, I mean, I, things come out. And, uh, but on this point, you know, I, I would just like to know who, who sent those people because they also stole quite a few, okay, they, they made it look like a burglary, as you can imagine. I mean, when, when I had come into the house anyway, as it, when I, I barely had time to, when, when I was running through, when these guys were behind me, um, they, had, they had stolen everything. I mean, they, they'd stolen the TV and the DVD and uh, cookbooks. You mean, sorry, sorry? Mr. Lespeville, you mean before you, you, you had got back, they had actually broken well, yeah, yeah, into your in fact, house? Yeah, yeah, see, I think, yeah, it was, it was done as a, a housebreak. Oh. Okay, it looked as though it was a housebreak, but I mean, you know, okay. since when do housebreakers wait for the owner <laughs> to, to come, come back? back. Yes, yes, All right, yes. so obviously this was there. Mm. I mean, they were so stupid. You know, these Albert René's goons, I mean, these Makutis, mm. they, weren't, mm. they weren't trained. They mm. were just the dregs of humanity that he had picked up from the gutter mm. to do all and, his dirty you, work for him. You said they, they ran off and they got into a car. So where, where was their car? Oh, it was, okay, it was, it was parked. For, okay, it was, I, I, I certainly didn't see any car yeah, when I came. I Definitely I didn't see any car when mm. I came. Mm. I would just presume they were lurking very close by. And as they saw me arriving and mm. going to the house, that's when they stopped and and, and yeah, and, and, and it would have called to me. I, I don't, I, I definitely did not see a car as, as I arrived out. at my mm -hmm. house. Well, I don't remember. Right. Not, nothing out of the ordinary. Mm -hmm. And um, so, Can and I they just stole. Ask, yeah, sorry. sorry. So you went to Dobbin Sampson, but did you also go to the police? Oh, oh certainly, certainly, yeah. I, I, I went to the police, I gave a statement. Obviously, I had to go to the insurance, uh, make a claim on my car. And, um, but then they also stole other things which are of, um, how should we say, extreme sentimental value. 
They stole the, the picture of my passing out parade. As I told you, I was an officer in the Rhodesian Army. And so, obviously, when you pass out, you have a, a photograph with your course officer and course instructor. And there was that. There was my commissioned parchment itself. As you know, when you become, when you're appointed an officer in any army, you get what they call a, a commission. It dates back from the Queen's days, when the Queen's Commission and all that signed by the president of the country. And they stole cookbooks of mine, which are, you know, but it's the thing, the things that are of the most value to me would be my passing out certificate, my passing out picture, and obviously my commission parchment. Um, and I would really like to know who these, who these guys were. Maybe some of them could be even be dead by now. I, I don't know their age. They would have been about my age. But I, I could never remember. Um, well built, but, you know. And uh, I'd very much like to know who, who gave them the orders to, to come to me that night. And, um, yeah. And uh, the, the, the French ambassador had told you yeah, he, yes, he, it, was, uh, it wasn't the ambassador at the time, it was another guy they had. Under the ambassador was a chap, we used to joke and say he was the French representative of the DGSO, the French uh, Security Service. So, but okay, whether that was true or not, I don't know. But he was, he appeared to be the, uh, yeah, he was more than just uh, attaché or, or whatever. He. Um, the questions and the things we used to talk about, he, he obviously had some line with other powers within the French government, shall we say. And he was the one who had said, you know, just be careful, we're hearing something's going to happen. You say, like, who's going to make something happen or who would be, what, what did he say, where, where they were hearing? Was no, it coming no, no, from no, government no, no. authorities? I, no, I or? presume he just heard something. That, I don't know, some comment saying, hey, this reveals getting out of line. Let's, mm. let's sort them out. And when you saw these three guys in, in the garden, were they, like, trying to hide? Or? No, 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 no. They, they were coming up. They were, com oh, they were coming okay, towards you. They, okay, there was the, the garage, and then mm. you went up some steps through the door, mm. and then into the start of the premises, there was a... Mm. Uh, sort of just a concrete area. It used to be the old Bodco, in fact. It was mm. the old Bodco. You'd go through the old Bodco furniture factory, oh, which was, I mean, had become a, a sort of greenhouse. There were plants there and mm. uh, a, a, the start of, a, of an apartment, of, uh, mm. an apartment, and then came the main house. Mm -hmm. okay. And um, So they weren't trying to hide or anything? No, like no, 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 wow. No, yeah. at that stage, yeah, they, that was straight mm. confrontation now. Mm. And, um, yeah, as I said, okay, fortunately I was able to. And I just want to know who, who gave them the orders. Um, I mean, they must have been really stupid guys, and like a lot of these people, you know, they, they didn't know what they were doing. And, I mean, you all, I mean you've heard enough now to know how Al Bayer operated using all these, um, these thugs. Well, and, well you called Devin Samson. Do you think uh, really he got your message? Well, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know whether he actually, I mean, whether one, I don't even, whether he actually had a recording device on the phone at that stage, I do not know. Whether he passed it on to Albert René, I don't know. Um, only Dobbin would, would, I mean, okay, but it's, I mean, again, it's irrelevant now anyway. I mean, Albert's not around and Dobin would certainly, he would certainly remember the conversation. I've seen him. I mean, I have nothing, I mean, against Dobin. He, he, he was doing a difficult job, and out of all the guys, he wasn't as bad as some of them. I didn't have any problems with Dobin as such, and, and no. And uh, I, I know the person. I mean, I, I see him in town, I say hello to him. I have nothing against Dobin Somsom. And the police, you never heard anything. What? Well, no, them. no, my dear. I mean, but you know, um, <laughs> I know. yeah, Mrs. Purvis. In those asking. days, I mean, the police, as you know, they they had been phew, destroyed and made into such an insignificant force. It was, mm -hmm. it, yeah, it was a it was a national uh, 
shame, no? The way the police were reduced. And so, no, I, I wasn't expecting anything from them. I was paid out for the, by the insurance, and, uh, you know, and that's it. And that, that, that ends the... But, but the one little thing, obviously, I would like to pay tribute to um, the militants of Party Sichuan Belom, who looked after me after that time. And, and yeah, you know, and it wasn't easy. And some of them, the Gabriel family, have already been here and told you how they, their house was burned down. And, that, yeah, because they were close to me. And that, that, that I know 100% was politically motivated. And, um, and yeah, and I just to say that, you know, how much I appreciate uh, the support, because in those days it wasn't easy. There weren't many friends around. There weren't many friends. And that's it, um, Your Honor. Didn't, um, the, the, wasn't there a story about you? In the people, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But certainly, yeah, yeah. There was, yeah, it was. I mean, okay, it uh, it certainly appeared in one of the party session newsletters. That, you know, the next one would have been, you know, talking about this attack on one of our members. Certainly, that 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 featured, yes, and uh, there may have been something in the Indian Ocean newsletter. I'm not sure. I don't remember. There certainly wasn't anything in in in, in the Nation. I mean, uh, in those days, the Nation didn't report things like that. And, um, yeah, if, 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 if any of those guys are still out there and they know what happened to my, to the picture of my passing out ceremony and, uh, and my commission parchment, then, yes, I'd very much like them back if, if they're still around. But I doubt it. I wouldn't be surprised if they've all been burned. And plus, oh, they stole a lot of photographs as well, photo albums and stuff like that. And that's that's that's. Mr. Spirit, when you talk about wearing uh, sort of political T-shirts, mm. do you have a T-shirt printed in the Seychelles or? You no, know, no, we had. Yeah, I forgot. I think it was um, the Makuti brothers, uh, Gorzag, pa, uh, Gorzag, and, and Fred, and, and and the young brothers. They used to have a tie and dye in a, a screen printing business, and then there was uh, Finesse as well, Roy Finesse, the guy mm. Spectra Design. Mm -hmm. Different people, Javis Shetty, the Shetty brothers, mm -hmm, different mm -hmm. people got to, you know people to make these T-shirts for us. I mean, the, the first ones were black, which party Sichuan pour démocratie dans ses cellules, and then and then obviously over a period they change. I mean, different colours and the ones with the heart, but but the, that the, the first one was party Sichuan pour démocratie dans ses cellules. That mm -hmm. was the first T-shirts we wore. Yeah, thank you. Right, so I don't know if any of you have any more questions. I've finished my my testimony. I, I thought maybe I'm reading it wrong that the People newspaper made a story about you. No. No, 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 no. no. There was no, no. There was nothing in the. There was nothing in the. Nothing was mentioned in the in the newspaper. As far as I remember, nothing was mentioned in the newspapers. No, not the national newspaper. Party Sichuan news, I mean, the underground newsletter, yes. Yes, 100% it was in there. You know, we used to have these, I mean, you remember, we used to have these weekly, mm. these weekly things that yeah. used to yeah. go out. Mm. It was in that. In your, well, there's a party concerning Mrs. Sylvette Frischow, am I right? Yeah, yes, okay, yeah, uh, yes, all right, yes. I did, oh, um, when I came back from Madagascar in early, what is it, um, 2011, 2012, 2013, 2012, I went to see Sylvette Frischow to ask her about everything and say, is there any chance of finding my things they stored somewhere in, 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 in Mesogipap? And she said no. Wasn't aware of it. Um, she's about the only person. I'm, I knew Sylvette Frischel quite well. Um, her, her sons were good friends of mine through windsurfing. We used to do windsurfing together. And, and I had a, a civil relationship with, with uh, Sylvette Frischel. At the time, she was, 
I think she was still a committee member of the SPPF, I'm not sure, or Party, uh, Party Le Pap, whatever it was called at that time. But nothing, as I said, nothing, nothing transpired from that. So we could ask if the three people that came with their steel bars to your house on the 6th of October 1991, oh. Oh. they can come forward to the well, commission. Oh, sure, sure. I, I, yes, I'd very much like yeah. them. They said, you know, I have nothing against them. Because I know they were, just, they were just monkeys. I mean, guys just, you know, just useless, just following orders because they obviously paid well, but, you know... <laughs> You know, I mean, when, when you have a, a person who's, who's, who's doing a job he's not even fit to do, <laughs> the titles and the fancy money, I mean, I, I feel sorry for people. They've taken advantage of, you know. So many of these people yeah. were dragged in because they just weren't intelligent enough to, to know differently. I mean, it would be good if they would come forward, but it would be good if we could get those things back for you, sure, the sentimental sure value but, but, if somebody yeah, has I'd, them. I'd just like to know, you know what I mean, who, sure I'd like to know who gave the orders. And you're very... If one wants to put down a formal figure, obviously, as I said, and I, and I, and I maintain that, it'll only, it can only be money that comes from recovering, because it's like a like windfall profits that the country is making. If, if the money is already out, so anything that comes back to us, is a profit for everyone. So out of that basis, yes, let's start the, okay, whether, obviously there are so many claims that have to see how much they get back and how they divide it up, how they use it, but my basis would, would start from that. Mm -hmm. And But as I said, once the money is, 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 all the money is recovered, or a substantial part of the money is recovered. I mean, the, those sorts of proceedings are very complicated, and those sure, that are no, ongoing... No, I'm not expecting this yeah. in, in one, in one yeah, day. I mean, yeah. it's, we're talking five, ten years to recover everything. I mean, you know, I always like to stress that human rights violations uh, give rise to state obligations, mm. right? And I do notice a reluctance on the part of complainants before this commission who are those people generally who make claims about being denied access to the resources of a country or being treated fairly, saying they don't want to take taxpayers' money. And effectively, they've been denied those resources by the state. Sure. That's what their claims establish. So, and those that were with the system benefited. Sure. So I don't understand <laughs> yeah, but, you know, I why just, the complainants yeah, you know, are so reluctant like, to now be treated yeah, I'm, fairly I by I, the state. Yeah, I, I, you see, I don't, I don't want to. I mean, okay, as I said, I've, I've managed to recover a bit. I had to work very, very hard in the process of doing it. And as I said, I'm 68 and I'm still working, and I don't see myself being able to stop working for another three or four years. And. Um, Anyway, but as I said, it's, I don't want to put any further burdens on the country, and so the only way one could do it is when we get these wind for this windfall back, voila. And then, and then, and then, then the government pro rata, obviously I presume they'll, all right, so we're talking of, say, 100 million or so, so much, one third goes into the sovereign wealth fund, one third is used to, uh, to, to help the poor people build better schools, do this, do that, as they would have had had the money not been stolen. And then one third is used to compensate people. I, I, I don't know the government. What, whatever they work out, whatever, whatever comes, I would accept. You know. So thank you very much, Mr. Desperville, for coming back today and setting out that aspect of your complaint. We will ask for a police file <laughs> yeah. to see if we can find your statement, right? That would yeah, be a miracle. Yeah, certainly, a yeah, 100% there was, because I, I'd, I'd have had to do it before going to the insurance anyway. I couldn't claim on the insurance if I hadn't made a police report. And I was paid. I was, I was paid a whatever for, for, for the smashed windscreens. Yeah, and we will also um, contact Dobbin Sampson. Yeah. For his Robin recollection will, will certainly of the, remember my, yeah. my very heated conversation. Yeah, and maybe um, is there some? You said that on the night that this happened, you called 
the Gabrielle family, if we could have a couple of, or a contact for someone in the Gabrielle family that we could talk to? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah there's, yeah. well, there's um, Davis. Davis mm -hmm. was the one yeah, who so came to do, he, he yeah, gave the submission Gabrielle. when, he came to talk about when they burnt his house yeah. down. Yes, okay. Because, because yeah. of his, his family's association with me, as I said, both his parents worked for me. Mm -hmm. And the sons and the daughters were all activists in, 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 in Belon Party Sessual Underground. Yeah, have a case for Davis Gabriel. Yeah, Davis yeah. Gabriel, yeah. so we yeah. can cooperate from that yeah. case then. Yeah. yeah, thank you. We have no further questions, unless you have anything no, you would no, like no. to add. I'm, no, I'm through. Thank you very much. Okay, so very unfortunately, you are our only <laughs> public session witness today. Oh. Tomorrow we're fully in closed session. Good. Thursday the 20th at 9 o'clock will be an open session. We have had a lot of witnesses and complainants drop out because of COVID mm. this week and last week. So we will have to be rescheduling those oh. people in February. We would like to express our sympathy yeah. to everybody who's in isolation or suffering oh. from COVID. But hopefully we can get these people on as soon as possible. Okay. But thank you very much for being right. our only public okay. session today. Ale, thank <laughs> okay. you very much. So we'll adjourn thank now. You. We will return nine o'clock tomorrow, the whole day in closed session. Thank All you. rise.